All right, welcome everybody to Conversations with an Artist hosted by Usura. My name is Silberto and I'm the Usura web editor here for the community. Today I'm with Joshua Ferrar. Uh, he will be um, discussing music and composition. Uh, a little bit about Joshua. He's a trained, uh, class. he's classically trained cellist with experience playing in orchestral chambers um, and solo settings. He majored in, a, in music at Amherst College, performing a senior honors thesis titled Faith and Disillusionment. Uh, he plays the principal cello in the Dunedin Sympathy Orchestra in New Zealand and Amherst Symphony Orchestra and also composes for strings and piano. So that, that's pretty amazing. So welcome, Josh. It's nice to have you um, sharing your talents with everybody. Um, I wanted to start off with a couple questions so we can get to know you a little bit better. Uh, so what first got you into music? Yeah, thank you for having me. I just want to also say, if you know, everyone else has any questions, I'm you know, happy to, to answer anything. Um, and if anyone has music requests, I could, I could try to try to do something as well. Um, so it's good that I have actually some of my family here because they are what get, got me music. My, my grandmother, uh, who's on the Eileen screen, got to give them a shout out, um, is a professional piano pianist and piano teacher. She's taught for, uh, I think until, until COVID, but like decades and decades. Um, so there was a mandate in the family that everyone had to choose an instrument. Um, and a bit of a cute story, I think I was like three, four years old, uh, we went to Instrument Petting Zoo, which is when a good orchestra brings out the bad instruments um, to let the little kids try them on. And I wanted to play the biggest instrument possible, so I went to the tuba, um, and little three-year-old Josh couldn't couldn't hold the tuba. Um, so I went to the double bass, and, and that was still a little, little too big for a three-year-old me, but the, the cello was the biggest instrument that I could, I could hold. So I was like, I'm going to play cello. So the rest is history, as they say. Yeah, that's really good. Um, so who, who inspired you to make music? I know you have a, a musical family, but was there anybody in particular that you you felt inspired by? Yeah, but I mean, besides the family, right? <laughs> um, I mean, there's the really good cellist, right? Yo Yo Ma. I remember uh, growing up listening to um, Rostrobovich and, and Pablo Casals. They're all like icons in the in the cello. Um, but you know, the, the, I guess the, the, the reason to make music has never been a, never been a the problem for me. I've always felt very emotive and this is like my way of expressing. It's always the, the emotions have come first and then the technique is very difficult to, to get uh, well. I'm, you know, still, still, uh, trying hard to, to play in tune and such. Um, but yeah, never necessarily, you know, playing for somebody, but, but playing for myself even, um, it's always come out. Yeah. Thank you for sharing. Um, how would you describe the music that you typically create? Sure, yeah. Um, I mean, I would first just describe it as music, right? Uh, I know that we like to put labels on things. I mean, whenever I pick up a cello, the first thing I'll do is is I'll just just improvise for maybe maybe ten minutes to, to loosen up the fingers, but also just because that's you know maybe I've been thinking of tunes and and I just want to to get it out there. Um, I'm classically trained, like that's the probably like where I'm most comfortable. Um, uh, but there's a lot within classical, right? Like my favorite composers are, are late romantic, like early 20th century uh, Shostakovich, for instance, who's a Russian composer um, who was writing during like the Stalin era, right? Um, but I'm also, you know, very, uh, very comfortable with, with some more modern. I, I like playing folk as well. Um, I like the the movie and the the video game music, which is all new genres now. Um, but some of that's really really good art, and it's really fun to play that. Um, I've done like a, a seven seven cello My Neighbor Totoro um, ensemble, and it's it's just so much fun to get that much cello out there um, playing a modern masterpiece. Um, so all of the above, um, definitely roots in classical, and I'll bring that with me. Um, but I also think classically trained people need to loosen up a bit and learn how to improvise, which is which was the used to be the, the tradition even in classical. Who would you like to collaborate with? Yeah, I mean, it's not so much who; it's just it's just what. I mean, music is about collaboration. You know, I think one of the, the hardest things about the pandemic it's been hard on everybody. Um, but it's been very hard on musicians because you know we're social creatures, right? 
no one's just like going out and doing their own thing. That's not the musician's way. It's about sharing and, and, and collaborating and, and working and growing together. And so, um, you know, that that's from like the orchestra, which is this massive, like how could, how could we as a society put like 80 people together, right? And, and get them to do something to, the, to build the whole. And it's just amazing. Um, to like my personal favorite, which is like the small ensembles, the, the three person, the four person quartet, right? Which is a genre with hundreds of years of history. Um, you're only four people, but you know, each of you are playing a very important part. Um, and you're, you're making something that's bigger than the whole. So, um, I think I just put out a call on Facebook, right? I've, I've been in, in LA, um, since uh, October. Um, and you know, the pandemic has been very hard here and things are just starting to open up. Um, but I've just been, you know, playing here and, and I'm hoping to start collaborating. I know the university has a couple orchestras that I'll, that I'll try to join and, and chamber music uh, too, in particular. So I know some of the other people on here on my, my political science cohort, Graham and Chris, and they're both musicians as well. And I think we have some, some faculty who are uh, in the political science department. I think we have a really good violist, which is, which is a rarity uh, in the world. Um, so hopefully moving forward, yeah, down to collaborate with anybody. Um, thank you for sharing. This is our actual first and maybe only uh, virtual concert that we have for this month. Um, and I hear you have some pieces that you're going to play for us. Can you talk a little bit about what you're going to play? I think um, I think I'll just go ahead and play the first piece because it needs no introductions. And then I'll then I'll then I'll talk a little bit. You've heard you heard me talking too much, right? some cut cut horribly in some ad on tv oh that's the um 
Bach unaccompanied suite number one uh, in G major. Um, so Bach wrote these these six cello suites. They're kind of like the not the first thing you learn as a cellist, but that's like <laughs> what you. I well, growing up, I you know listened to them. I'm like, I want to get good enough to play that. Um, that's kind of for every cellist. Um, so that's the that's the most famous. That's the first one in this book of 36 movements. Um, and the second piece I'm going to play um, is also close to home. And this is a, uh, so I'm, I'm a uh, Jewish and draw a lot of inspiration from um, the Jewish music tradition, very rich um, tradition. Um, and so this is by um, Ernst Bloch um, and it's called Prayer. Again, I noticed some people joined. That was uh, Block's prayer. Shall we? I think I'll just open it up for a little bit. I want to see if there's any questions. So I have a couple um, original compositions um, as well. I think, I'll, I think I'll just go ahead then. Um, I have a quick question. Yeah, go How ahead. How's um, practice been for you living in such small quarters? Well, on the one hand, like the cello is in my bedroom. I barely ever leave, right? <laughs> or I have barely ever left. So there's um, so there's no there's less excuses, right? Um, 
But no, the biggest challenge is like reasons to play. Now, obviously, like I have to pick up the child at least once a week, right? Um, where's my soul otherwise? Um, but it really is difficult, you know, if you're not, if there's no one to share the music with, um, to, to keep going. Right. Um, so very much looking for, and I think all the musicians, you know, in the, uh, around the world are very much looking to going back to, um, doing what music's about, which is about sharing. Right. So when people people think about cello, they think about lyrical, you know, the 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 near the end of the movie and the, the wha you know, it's it's a uh, waxing lyrical, maybe tears in the face. Um, so that's most of the cello music I write, um, mostly like love love themes, you know. Um, so that's uh, this is what this first one is, uh, untitled. But I hope you enjoy. This is an original composition I wrote about two or three years ago. again so as an untitled composition and I have a, well I have a couple more but we can we can cut it wherever um, or if anyone has any questions please please butt in um, but this the second composition uh, is called song without words uh, so a little also written for love <laughs> um, a couple years earlier so about, about 20 2016. Thank you. 
So what, what's next for you? Where can people find you? What's next for me? Um, <laughs> well, that's a, that's the open question, right? People can find me at 309 <laughs> right? Um, I think, yeah, I, that's, a, that's a big question mark. Um, I want to um, kind of go back to what I was doing. So I was living in New Zealand for a year and a half and um, you know, I was doing my, my political science, was doing masters, doing research, um, but I was spending about half time doing music as well. So I was got involved with multiple orchestras, um, got involved with lots of chamber music, um, and I thought it was a really good balance, you know. Um, so I want to I want to return to that, right? Uh, to to quote the old J. I always bring up this this JFK quote. Um, but he basically says that um, power corrupts and poetry cleanses. Um, and so I think it's, you know, as not to get too, but like as, you know, we consider politics uh, corrupting, I think the power of, of, of the arts to heal is, is super important. So they got to go together, right? We have a question from Sophia. Hi, Josh. Music was so beautiful. I think they just moved moved us all. And it's such a beautiful Sunday morning and the music has just added to it. I had a question. When when you write your pieces, like when you compose it, uh, what are the emotions that you go through? I know that these questions can be a little private, but like the emotions and the, during the process of your compositions. Yeah, so it's all melody driven for me. I know that there's there's a lot of different techniques, but the melody is always, right, and that's why it's so, it's so easy for me to write, like, this is just solo shell music, right? I, I could probably sit down and like, like I don't, and I write down like maybe 2% of, of what I, uh, I compose because I'm bad about writing it down, right? Um, 
So like melodies just just come to me. So that's like not tricky. I guess like where do they come from? So I like I listen to a lot of music. I really like certain composers. Like for instance, this piece. Like the melody is just you know it's it's all like basically C major. It's 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 ornamentation around arpeggios. Like it's 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 very song like. Um, but even like near near the end when I go in, I do this this repeated you know like like even that like that's from like Dvorak's New World like it's a, like it's a direct reference to that um, where there's this beautiful um, this slow movement that I think every a lot of people will be familiar with um, so like I definitely draw a lot of in, influence from from other um other pieces um but yeah the melody comes and then if i have to, if it's like a if there's more, more than one voice or they need to do um there need there needs to be uh orchestration then it's then it's that's always tricky for me to like get the like the music the music theory is tough <laughs> there's no, no way around it um and i'm not the best pianist like I have a piano here but I, I i can scratch along um but yeah and most of my music just follows very um it's it's either um, through compose, which means it just goes, 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 or uh, even more of it is this ABA, which is like, you know, you could call it sonata form, um, or tertiary form, but like it's, you know, it, it works, right? You, we have something, we get to know it, then we have this contrasting thing, and then we want to go back to where we started and see like, maybe, have we learned, this is like the hero's journey, right? If you want to get literary, right? It, it just works, um, this ABA format. So that's, yeah, that's the structure usually. I don't want to keep you all too long. I have, I do have one other piece if you, if you want to. Yeah. So maybe if you can, maybe if you can close out uh, the program with the final, final piece, piece and, okay. and we'll, we'll gladly hear it. So this one's a little different, a little less, it's still lyrical a little bit, but um, this has a bit of, bit of the Shostakovich coming in in the uh, middle. Actually, this is a, the middle is a reference to a late Beethoven quartet. Um, so Beethoven like went deaf. He wasn't having a good. He had like family issues. <laughs> he wasn't a great father, um, and so like his la his late quartets are like, um, yeah, they 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 get deep, right? So there's um, um on the 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 Voyager, um, this theme that we sent out, you know, with this gold plate of of all of like what is the best that we've produced. Um, it is a little bit too weighted towards the old white man. Um, but I think mean, this this one that they included is their work, but it, it's a reference to the Cavatina uh, movement. So I hope you enjoy. That's in the middle. The, it's just fluffy in the, in the beginning and the end. It's called Whispers. <laughs>
Thank you so much, Josh, for sharing a little bit of your talents with us this Sunday morning. If anybody has any questions, feel free to ask. Another question I had was like, have you collaborated um, with other musicians like, who play different um, instruments? Yes, yes is the short answer. Um, so like, I'm more familiar with collaborating with strings and piano and, and brass and woodwind. Um, but yeah, I played in a I played in a band once. <laughs> you can't hear the cello in the band, but <laughs> um, you still have a good time, right? Um, and I've done like there people bring out like this the early instruments, which are which are fun, and um, then some more non traditional stuff. Um, so bringing in, so when I was in New Zealand, um, bringing in some of the the Maori instruments that are traditional, um, it's it's great to I think it's great to mix it up, right, and, and bring it all together. I have a request from my mother-in-law. She said if you have any Vivaldi, um, anything by Vivaldi that, that you can play. Here's a little Vivaldi. This is um, Vivaldi, like back in the day, back in the day, meaning like the 1600s. <laughs> um, yeah, it was like music was so formulaic, you just threw it together. You know, you maybe had a tune, like he would write a symphony a day, no problem. And now, like, it's a big deal to write uh, something like that. So, this is like, um, he, this is from um, six sonatas that he wrote for cello. And um, so, this is, the, this is the first one. Um, so, there might be a piano part that we, we can ignore, but I think it'll, I think this will come through. This is uh, sonata number one by Vivaldi.
that the is that the Vivaldi fix there? <laughs> so Vivaldi wrote this um, very famous double. Many of you may recognize it. it goes. Like... Which um, many of you may know, and it's it's a lot of fun. It has like it has some some head banging, but um, you do need two cellos, unfortunately. So if anyone here plays cello, you know maybe. Time to stand, stand up, right? <laughs> so if anybody has any last minute questions before I go, feel free to ask right now. If not, uh, this recording will be available online so everybody can hear it many, many times over. Yeah, sure. Just had a last question. Um, so I've seen uh, when singing it, um, and singing and music comes together. I've seen like many instruments together, but would it be possible to have just singing and then cello together? Yeah, absolutely. Anything's possible. <laughs> um, I think it'd be it could be in a so the cello is a very versatile instrument. So things I like about it um, because it it can very much obviously be a melodic solo instrument, but it can also be an accompanist, right? It can be it can be plucking. Um, or you can just you know put down the chords. It can be like a like the bass in the in the modern, uh, like a stream bass. Um, so I mean I can imagine it working either way, right? Where like you have a vocal, you have two, you have basically a vocal duet, um, or the cello is just more there as an accompanist. But yeah, it works either way. <laughs> well, I just like to thank everyone here for for taking some of your Sunday and uh, entertaining me. This is my first concert um, in in a while. <laughs> Um, with more than a few people. So it's it's really nice to be able to do this and hopefully uh, we'll we'll be in person not too not too far in, into the future. <laughs>